everyone. First of all, I want to welcome and thank everyone for attending our webinar today. My name is Vija Kushenko, an analyst for the analyst team at Lee Chandler. And today, I'm joined by my colleague, Daniel Murphy. So we all know every business has a purpose of making profit. The good news is you can work out how fast your business can turn a profit very easy by using the working capital cycle formula. If you never heard about it, stick around because we will explain the working capital cycle in simple step. We also take a look at some examples and effective working capital. To begin, I will talk about the definition and four step in working capital cycle. So what is a working capital cycle? It is the length of time it takes to convert the total net working capital into cash. Businesses typically try to manage this cycle by selling inventory quickly, collecting revenue from customer quickly, and paying bills slowly to optimize the cash flow. So let's look at the formula. The working capital cycle equal to inventory days, float receivable days, and minus the payable days. When you know that your working uh, capital cycle is, you can predict how long it will take for you to be paid in full, and also how long you might be out of pocket. With this information, you can better manage your cash flow, inventory, and efficiency. Now I will explain the working capital cycle in four steps. Step one, inventory days. Your inventory days refer to the time it takes on average to sell your inventory. Inventory days provide the numbers of days of selling before the warehouse is empty. This metric gives a good indication on whether a company is unnecessary holding on its inventory. Let's take a look at an example. Assume that you have a company take you about 80 days to sell a batch of stocks. That means you're working, uh, you are working with 80 inventory days. Step two, receivable days. Uh, now that you have produced and sold your stocks, you need to repay. Receivable days refer to the time it takes for, for your client to pay you. Many companies provide credit periods on sale and receivable day to show how long on average customers are taking to pay. In the example, your client taking 21 days to pay you. So in other words, you are working with 21 receivable days. Step three, payable days. Next, we need to look at your payment practice. It's referred to the time it takes for you to pay for your suppliers. Payable days show the average number of days the business is taking to discharge its obligation to suppliers. In the example, we say that it takes 90 days for you to pay your supplier. So you are working with 90 payable days. Step four, working capital cycle. Now that we have all the parts, let's put them into the formula. So we will have the working capital cycle equal to 80 plus 21 and minus 90. So we're going to have a working capital cycle of 11 days. So in this example, it takes a total of 11 days for your company to turn the current asset into the money in the bank. Next, Daniel will show us some example of possible and ne positive and negative working capital. So the first example that we're going to look at is a positive working capital example. Um, it's kind of similar to the example that V just gave. So if inventory days plus receivable days minus the payable days is a positive number, you would have positive working capital. And in this example, it's 85 inventory days, 20 receivable days, 90 account payable days equals 15, which means that the company is only using out-of-pocket cash for 15 days before receiving full payment. Um, next slide, please. Another example is you can also have negative working capital. And 
So negative working capital is typically businesses that can generate cash quickly. So grocery stores, fast food, retail stores. Um, Also, if it's a cash only business, um, they wouldn't have any accounts receivable days. So that would be zero. So it would almost always come out to a negative number. And what negative working capital means is that you receive your full payment before you have to pay your suppliers. So obviously with a cash business, you're not paying anybody else. So you would have the full payment before you pay the suppliers. Next slide. And so there's a couple different ranges to where you can have an effective working capital. So a ratio either below one or negative it shows that um, there are liquidity issues or it isn't productive enough to how much debt you're taking on. Um, 1.2 to 2, that ratio is kind of where you want to be. And it shows a healthy business that has enough short-term assets to secure its immediate debt. And over 2, um, it's not really like the higher the ratio, the better, because over 2, it could just mean that you have too many assets and you're not operating efficiently. Like you can bring the number down a little bit and be more efficient. Next slide. And financing. So based on your working capital ratio, you can use financing to cover the period between payments. So the periods where you're using out of pocket cash and banks will lend based on liquidity and give themselves a buffer. So if they see that you are 70% liquid, they may lend you 50%, give themselves 20% buffer. And there's another way to finance through the receivables based on the credit coming from the receivables. The banks may also finance those to help you out if the where the receivables coming from are or have good credit. And thank you for coming to our webinar. Any questions? We do have some questions for you. Um, I, I'll, I'll take the first one, V. So the first question, how can I make my business more efficient? Um, so I think that the best way to do this would be to see your working capital ratio and if I mean, obviously, if you're a cash business, you're going to have a negative ratio, which in that scenario is perfectly fine. But if you're not a cash business, you want to get your ratio to between 1.2 and 2, just so you're able to be somewhat liquid, but be able to have enough assets to cover long-term debt and still have an effective business versus... If it's over, if your ratio is over two, then your business may not be as efficient as it can be. So ideally you want to be between the 1.2 and 2.0 range. And the second question is how to improve your working capital cycle. So there's a few ways to improve your working capital cycle. For example, you can reducing your receivable days. That means you getting your debtors to pay you faster. The second way is try to stretching your payable days uh, so you can have a longer payment terms. You can also manage your inventory days by avoiding stockpiling and getting your product to move faster. And the last thing to do is making sure that your receivable day are not greater than your payable day. Uh, so that means answering that you get paid by your debtor before you need to pay for your supplier. So if nobody has any question, so that is the end of our webinar. Thank you so much.